What's up, gang? How you guys doing? It is Lieutenant Sal Blue, 28 year law enforcement veteran and the author of the Top 25 Mistakes and Route to the Good Life, coming at you today with my daily podcast. Different area, different atmosphere, different responsibilities that I got going on today, man. Today, I am babysitting, babysitting, dog sitting, whatever you want to call it. Um, I am babysitting right now, and hey, this is what <laughs> this is what I'm doing, and so um, I can't leave the puppy alone upstairs while I'm all the way down in the wine room. So I'm just here in my office, uh, and uh, just hanging out, just hanging out, and coming at you with my daily podcast. I got some things that I want to talk about. And uh, they are for real today, guys. They are for real today, what I want to talk about. But first, quick little bit of housekeeping, guys. If you have not yet gone over to LieutenantSoundBlue.com, that is my website, Lieutenant Sound Blue. So L-T-S-A-L-B-L-U-E.com. Go on over there. Um, I'm running a special, right? You can pick up your book, Top 25 Mistakes, free. Um, I am shipping out 10,000 copies, 10,000 copies. Uh, uh, hopefully, I'm sending out 10,000 copies uh, before the end of 2021. But going into 2022, I'll still be sending out the copies until I hit the 10,000 mark. So 10,000 copies, autographed copies of my book, Top 25 Mistakes and Route to the Good Life. Free, you pay the shipping, man. And I got tons of other specials over there. So go on over there, check it out, man. It is tons of goodness in this book, guys. So just wanted to give you some quick housekeeping on that. But anyway, guys, let's talk about today's podcast, man. Today's podcast and this question has come up so many times and I've struggled with it, right? I've struggled with this question of why do I do this? Why do I back off? Why can I not be this type of person? And so um, I want to ask you guys a question. So I'm going to put it out here in the podcast. And you guys, I want you to respond. Respond in the comments. Um, talk to me about how you feel about becoming this type of person. And tell me, have you reached the heights of what you want to reach without becoming this type of person? I need to know because this is something that I'm dealing with, something that I'm struggling with, and something that I'm coming at you guys with. So the question of today, man is how many times have you allowed your enemy to rise up against you or regroup against you? How many times have you allowed it? For me, man, it has been over and over and over again that I've allowed this to happen. Now, as I ask you guys this question, right, I, I'm going to be the first to admit um, that I have not yet mastered this. I have not just mastered this feat of, of what do I need to do to stop my enemy from rising up against me over and over again. And so um, I began to do some research and some reading and some talking to people. And a couple of people uh, put me down with the book The Art of War uh, and told me to reread it. I've read it before. They told me to reread it and really, really um, uh, start to uh, understand the philosophies of that book. And it was very, very important, and it took me a long way, right? So many years ago, right, I brought into the philosophy, right? And this is the philosophy of uh, killing with kindness. I'm sure you guys have heard that term before, right? Killing with kindness. I've heard this over and over and over and again. Killing with kindness, right? Now, although this may work for the meek, right, or the weak, or um, uh, or the powerless, right? It does not work well when your goal is to be a conqueror. I feel that my goal is to be a conqueror. My desire is to be a conqueror, and and, I, and when I say conqueror, I don't mean like I need to conquer people, but I need to conquer um, all of the elements that are coming against me to stop me from succeeding in my life at the highest level. So yes, I want to be a conqueror. 
right? And if it happens to be people to get my way, then they'll conquer. If it happens to be economy that gets in my way, then it needs to be conquered. Okay? Health issues, conquer them. Mental issues, conquer them. Relations issues, conquer them. I am a conquering type individual. So if I'm this way, then why am I dealing with this so much deep conflict in my head, guys? Now, I'll tell you what, right? This advice was given to me at a very, very young age by my father, right? Um, and my father, he was basing everything on his, his Christian values, which I respected um, completely. But as I got older, I realized that conquerors, right, do one thing. They conquer, you know. And, and placing myself at the mercy of my enemies, it did not sit well with me. It just did not sit well with me in my heart. Um, you know, being an alpha person and being a, a conqueror or wanting to become a true conqueror, um, killing people with kindness didn't work for me well. You know, I'm a nice person and I smile, but when it when it's time to go... When it's go time, I'm ready to go. I, I don't want to smile anymore, right? I, I want to handle business. So, so that is where I'm at, guys. But what I saw in my life was that everyone around me um, have always spoke about taking the humble route, right? Taking the humble route. And this is in the event of a confrontation. Um, but... During that time, I've watched their enemies, right, come back at them stronger and stronger until um, they were crushed by their competition. So in taking the humble route, right, um, it has allowed uh, people in my surroundings, their, en their enemies, to rise up and, and, and come against them. And crush them, right? The enemies didn't show any mercy. The enemies didn't take the humble route. As soon as their enemies had the position of power, they laid the hammer down with no mercy, man. So, so now, when I hear people say take the humble route, I'm conflicted with that as well. So, I can't kill them with kindness. The humble route doesn't seem like it's working for my peers. So. Where am I at, guys? Man, if you decide to become a great leader, you must learn to crush your enemies completely. This is where I'm at. You must learn how to crush your enemies completely, totally and completely. Now, I know this sounds kind of barbaric, right? Um, but that is probably why most people never become great leaders. Right, because the sound of crushing to your enemies completely sounds it sounds completely barbaric. It sounds barbaric rolling around in my head. And and that is the theatrics of the movies and everything else that uh we are watching when it comes to crushing our enemies, right? We're just not putting it all together um when it comes to this philosophy, because that's what it is. It should be a philosophy that if you're going to become a great leader, that um, you can't be showing all the mercy for your enemies. Because trust me, if the tables are turned, they're not going to show any mercy for you guys. So um, when I was doing some research, you know, especially since my dad hit me with, you know, the Christian religious route, I, I did a little research. And so I tapped into the Old Testament and I saw that even Moses, Moses, that's right, Ten Commandments Moses, he made it perfectly clear, he made it perfectly clear that if you rise against Moses, you're going to get crushed completely. And he made sure that as he parted the Red Sea, right, and brought it down on the pharaohs, annihilating them, mind, body, and spirit, he crushed them. Because he was a great leader. And he led a lot of people. So understand that. When you're a great leader, this is what you do. You crush. You annihilate. 
you get rid of your enemies at all costs and so um, now I have a different example of, of what I think that a great leader should do and how they should do it right you know so um I learned this the hard way though guys I, I'm not gonna lie I learned um, about this the hard way I didn't um, I didn't just immediately that's who I was and that's how I was especially when I began to rise in power and law enforcement in my department um, I show way too much mercy show way too much mercy right and um and far too many times i let up on my enemies halfway right people were trying to bring me down people were trying to disgrace my name people who were trying to hurt me people who were trying to take my job right um and as i rose in power and i was able to crush them i let up on them halfway i let up on them halfway through the annihilation and um and that was a big mistake, right? Um, because I was only, because I let up on them, I had to see them later. I had to see them later down the line as they were trying to build up strength once again and, and find the will and some allies to get on their side, right? Of other people who I crushed halfway, right? They said, maybe if we all come together, we can take them out. You know, and I had a bunch of people come together in that way and try to take me down all because I let up halfway in crushing people. I let up halfway in trying to annihilate them. And, you know, um, they try to come at me from different angles. And each time, because I, I, some reason I felt that as a leader, right, you need to, not be so barbaric you need to be softer as a leader and if you know you can crush somebody you shouldn't crush them i don't know what the hell i was thinking that is that is not how you lead guys that is not how you lead and that is probably not how you're going to truly get ahead at the highest levels when i started realizing this i started realizing that the people who were at the highest levels their enemies as soon as the enemies rose up against them, they annihilated them completely. Okay? They annihilated them completely, chopped their head off the snake immediately, guys. And that is how some of the great leaders that I've seen uh, in my department and around me and how they operated. Now, understand this, guys. When you defeat someone, but you don't defeat them completely, um, what you do is you leave them um, only uh, you give them like the slightest bit of hope, right? You give them the slightest bit of hope. And, and so in their mind, they're thinking that if they come at you differently, they could win, right? Because they don't know that you backed off a little bit. They don't know uh, that um, you could have crushed them and annihilated them and eliminated them completely. They don't know that right so they are thinking that maybe you're not as strong as they initially thought you were so if they try a different angle right um they can probably win and that little bit of hope that little bit of hope burns like the embers in a flame right in a forest fire you know when you fail to put out your little fire pit and the embers are float uh, floating in the forest and then they start a wildfire right they start a wildfire just the slightest bit of hope in an enemy's heart, okay, can create an event that could eventually crush you. Okay, so understand that. And you need to be thinking about this all the time when it comes to your enemies, right? Um, it's another thing that I want to talk about, right? You have to defeat your enemies so that there is no way they will want to even try to, um, to come at you again. And the reason why they wouldn't want to try to come at you again is because they lost so much, right? Um, when you crush somebody so bad that they lose so much, right, that, that they feel like if they, they don't have anything left, that if they came at you again, the only thing they have left is the breath in their body, right? So um, that is how you have to crush somebody. You have to literally crush them to the point of... of if they feel like 
if they come at you again, there's nothing left for them, okay, but the breath in their body. So they don't want to lose that, right? And I'm not talking nothing else to lose. I'm talking about they realize that they have everything else to lose, including their life, if they come at you again. And that is how you have to feel. You may not be the one that's destroying and killing them, but you knock them down so many blocks that that they they can't survive anymore. They can't survive anymore and that just the will to go on. So you literally have to crush people's will when they come at come after you, when they come try to come against you, right? Um, so you have to understand that. You have to give them no reason whatsoever to try to come at you again. Now, understand this. And, and this happens when you have friends that used to be enemies or co-workers um, that become your enemies um, and uh, or allies that are no longer allies because they try to jump to the other team. Um, what we do is when we sympathize with with our enemies, right? So that's these other people. Uh, or we pity them, um, especially if they were our friends, guys. Um, uh, what we do is uh, we are hoping one day to reconcile, right? We're hoping one day to make it right. Um, I watch people do this a lot in uh, relationships where, where, where um, one person tried to destroy the other one's life and then they backed off halfway and but they still want to be like friends like in relationships and and I'm not just talking about romantic relationships I'm talking like friendships right and so uh they'll probably even apologize and say hey listen I'm sorry I came at you like that I thought you were trying to ruin me or ruin my career so on and so forth right and so they keep these people around and because of the fact that they try to leave open the window of reconciliation right they pull back from annihilating that individual just because of the fact that they think that maybe, just maybe one day, I can make it right with this person. When you do that, man, all you do is uh, you stop yourself from crushing them, right? And so once you defeat them, right, so you don't crush them all the way, but once you defeat them, um, what you do is you leave some room for them to not only fear you because of, of maybe the, at that point in time they didn't know what you were capable of, right? But now they know what you're capable of, so now they fear you, but the fact that you did not crush them all the way, they still have enough energy and strength to hold resentment against you. And nothing is as scary as an individual with resentment because they will hold on to that resentment for years and years and years right all the way up until the moment where um if they get a chance they will destroy you okay they will sit around and wait for years to destroy you and trust me when they get that moment okay because of the fact that they fear you okay they are not going to hold back. They're going to destroy you completely. So when they come after you, they are coming for your head on a platter, guys. Understand this. When you uh, show leniency and you hold off on crushing your enemies. So understand that. Now, um, I'm saying all of this in the form of crushing and killing and hurting. But listen, guys. Just take all of this and picture it, okay, in the finance industry. Take all of this and picture it, okay, in the business industry. Take all of this and picture it in the health industry, okay. All of these different areas and aspects, okay. Take this entire philosophy, okay, and if you're going to be a great leader in any of those areas of your life, okay, any of those professions that you're trying to achieve at the highest level, you're going to stir up enemies. You're going to stir up resentment. You're going to stir up people who at one time were your allies and now they're your enemies. At one time they were your friends and now they're totally against you. 
Okay, maybe it is your uh, philosophy on what you want to put move forward. Maybe you learned something that they didn't learn something. Maybe they feel that they should be in a position of power instead of you. Okay, either way, okay, it's going to happen. Um, it's going to stir up, right? And when people become your enemies, you have to make sure to quick, fast, in a hurry, defeat them. Okay, and annihilate them at all costs, right? Now, understand this one fact, right, guys? Understand this one fact. Your enemies, no matter your profession, wish you ill will. They're your enemies, okay? So, understand that. They are your enemies. And I don't care if you're a, <laughs> you're a church member. I don't care if you're a... Uh, a volunteer for a children's hospital or I don't care whether you're rescuing animals okay alright so think of this guys uh, no matter what if you are in a position of power and someone is your enemy they wish you ill will no matter how much good you do everywhere else they're your enemies okay and there's nothing they want more than to eliminate you at all costs so if someone is your enemy in any of these areas and you guys are thinking, oh man, I do so much good in the community, man. I volunteer, I do this, I do that. Your enemies don't care. Your enemies don't care. They hate you for a specific reason. That specific reason has nothing to do with all of the good things that you do. Or maybe it does have something to do with all the good things that you do and it is because of those good things that you do that they have become your enemy because that's something maybe that they want to do okay you never know what people are thinking in their heads but once someone becomes your enemy you have to act on it quickly man you have to act on it quickly and um and so um if they want to eliminate you right they may act friendly guys they may act friendly for a long time, especially if you defeat them. If you defeated them in the past, okay, they may wait 10 years, right? They may wait 10 years. I mean, I've seen it happen, especially in law enforcement. They may, may wait 10 years after you defeated them if you only defeated them halfway. But it is only because they're abiding time, right? They're abiding time trying to figure out what and how and what do they need to be and who do they need to become in order to bring you down in order to conquer you in order to defeat you okay and during this entire time as they act like your friends as we talked about yesterday right of uh, people allowing friends within their circle and those friends within their circle are trying to take them out okay so understand this man especially because sometimes you defeat people Right, and you're at such a high level that you defeat people through your subordinates who defeated those people, right? So they're they're hating you, and you haven't even had a direct hand in their demise. You have subordinates under you that crushed them and defeated them. So you need to understand this, guys. You need to understand this philosophy. And when your enemies are there, crush them completely. Crush them completely, right? Now. If your goal is total victory, then uh, your answer is totally clear. If your goal is total victory, then your answer is clear. Allow your enemies no options. Crush them completely. Crush your enemies completely. Allow them no options. Don't allow them the chance of hope. Don't allow them the chance of resentment. Crush them completely so they have nothing left to come at you with. And I know this is hard for a lot of you to stomach, and I know it's hard for a lot of you to um, to digest, right? Stomach, digest, think about, uh, you know, this can't be me. But I've been there at, uh, on both sides, okay? I've been on both sides, and I'm going to tell you right here, right now, if you're rising in power, you have to crush your enemies, guys. You have to do it, man. Um, as you rise in power, you will always stir up um, uh, emotions in people, right? You will always stir up people um, who will, for some reason or another, um, resent you. For some reason or another, uh, become your enemy. 
it, it just happens when you are rising in power. Okay, you just can't please everybody. And because of the fact that you go through life not trying to please everybody, you stir up enemies. You stir up people who are totally and completely against you and your philosophy. Period. That's it. They just want to... Some people just don't like the way you look, right? You know, maybe you smile too much. Maybe you look too damn good. <laughs> Either way, man, these people don't like you and they're your enemy. Okay, when you figure that out and you find out who your enemy is, crush him completely. Crush him completely, annihilate them, man. Do yourself the biggest favor in the world, guys. Do yourself the biggest favor in the world. If they were your friends, right, and they become your enemy, don't keep them around. Don't keep them around. Immediately get them out of your circle of influence. Immediately eliminate them from your business, your corporation. Uh, whatever you're trying to build, eliminate them immediately. As soon as you figure out they're your enemy, get them as far away from you as possible. After you crush them, completely annihilate them, guys. So, uh, listen, um, that is what I'm talking about today, man. And um, I got some other things that I'm going to be continuing on to uh, talk about in uh, tomorrow's podcast. But we will save that for tomorrow, man. Um, I have given you guys enough golden nuggets today. Um, crush your enemies at all costs, man. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Make sure you guys, once again, hop on over to Lieutenant Sound Blue. I am giving away 10,000 copies of my book, Top 25 Mistakes in Route to the Good Life. 10,000 autographed copies I'm giving away. So, um, and you guys mess around. I might turn this into an NFT. All right, so knock it off. <laughs> I just learned by NFTs myself. But anyway, um, I will see you guys tomorrow on my daily podcast. And make sure you hop on over to all of the social medias that you would like. I'm all of them. I'm at Lieutenant Sal Blue. And shoot me a DM on what you would love for me to talk about in my next podcast. All right. Um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. Today is Friday. This is episode 184. And I'm up in my office. Up in my office hanging out uh, and babysitting dogs. Alright? That is my life tonight. But um, I am happy about it. I'm feeling good. And everybody's asleep already. So um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. You guys have a great evening. Deuces. <laughs>